style augmented reality games, uh, redefining the special affordances uh, that will be presented by Marta Fernandez Ruiz uh, and covers the way physical space can be integrated into gameplay, uh, the game world spaces and gameplay spaces. So Marta, here you go. Okay, perfect. So you can all see the presentation. Yeah. yeah? Okay. So uh, I am presenting our paper, Special Affordances, Environmental Visualization and Exploration in Mobile Augmented Reality Games, Redefining the Special Affordances. The, the authors are David Ruiz Torres, Hector Puente, and myself, uh, Marta Fernandez. We start from um, or, uh, or, or approach um, to hybrid games. Uh, the main theme of this special issue is through mobile augmented reality, uh, which is understood as, as the real time visualization and combination of physical and virtual elements on mobile devices. We start from the idea that uh, mobile augmented reality involves new ways of experiencing space through hybridization of the analog and the digital. Uh, so basically, our main goals in this research are uh, understanding the spatial affordances in the context of uh, mobile augmented reality, and especially to offer a reinterpretation of uh, the concept of spatial affordance, also to understand uh, how this new media uh, integrates into gameplay experiences, and also to assess up to what extent the physical is integrated into the gameplay. So um, I will start describing a little bit the, the literature review we, we carried out. Um, in the first place, uh, we start with, um, uh, with the notion of spatiality provided by Janet Murray, stating that uh, the spatial affordance uh, is the power for digital environments to represent navigable, enactable, and traversable spaces. We propose a, a revision of this term in the context of augmented reality, um, taking into account the particularities of mobile devices as drivers of ubiquity and the specificities of the video game as medium. So uh, we also carried out uh, a literature review on different works that have assessed previously affordances of uh, augmented reality. Um, some of the fields that uh, carried out this research uh, have to do with interior design, education, uh, also uh, some of them gaming, and the main affordances that they highlighted uh, had to do with changing the, the perception of, of the physical elements, also uh, the, the emergence of new behaviors and practices, as well 3D visualization and uh, traversability or movement gestures. The conclusions uh, achieved from, from this uh, state of the art um, can be structured into three main blocks, uh, ubiquity, hybridization, and game spaces and gameplay experiences. Um, with ubiquity, uh, we, we assess or we um, uh, we want uh, to, to inform about how uh, mobile devices make it possible uh, to separate virtual content from specific physical spaces. In this sense, each space uh, can bring different particularities to the hybrid game experience. As per hybridization, um, uh, we have seen that uh, different technologies uh, that afford best uh, tracking and scanning processes 
uh, have enhanced uh, the affordances of augmented reality. In this sense, uh, visibility and movement gestures are uh, the most highlighted affordances uh, in the field of uh, video games with AR components. And finally, um, uh, we also um, I want to highlight the difference uh, made between game spaces on the one side as uh, the representational layer of games, right, the aesthetical or uh, the narrative layer, and on the other side, the gameplay layer, you know, that has to do with the interaction of players with the rules and game mechanics. Um, finally, uh, um, as a way to, to finish this state of the art, it is very important to highlight the fact that different studies have, um, have especially pointed towards the, the need for augmented reality games to offer a, our own game experience, not just a, to imitate or to mimic the gameplay of desktop uh, interface games, but to, de to develop their own possibilities. So taking this into account, our main research goals were, uh, uh, on the one hand, provided, providing a notion of spatial affordances for mobile augmented reality video games, also testing whether the physical environment can function or can work as a gameplay space, also, identifying uh, the differentiating elements that spatial affordances bring to the game experiences. Um, additionally, comparing the use of spatial affordances in different gameplay experiences or game genres. And finally, identifying the degree to which uh, mobile augmented reality video games take advantage of the physical spatial elements with respect to the game world or a representational layer and gameplay elements. So in order to do this, uh, we carried out this literature review I described previously. We also uh, mapped the, the dimensions and particularities of affordances in mobile augmented reality video games. Um, we, we also perform an exploratory participant observation on a sample of 46 uh, augmented reality video games for mobile devices. And finally, uh, we performed this, uh, this uh, analysis and, and comparison of the different uh, video ludic experiences with, with the mobile phones. In here, I, I show you a graphic uh, separating the different genres or the different game experiences we analyze it from augmented reality games that kind of resembled or mimicked the experience of board games, also combat, uh, battle games, shooting, pet simulators, exploration games. In here, I can also show the, the specific titles we, we analyze it. They are uh, a lot, so we can, we can pass them. And uh, as per the, the discussion and the results, uh, we, on the one hand, propose to extend Murray's definition of the spatial affordance so we can integrate three essential aspects the hybridization of the analog and the digital, the ubiquity of mobile devices, and also the possibilities of enhancing mobile device based gaming experiences. In this sense, we think uh, uh, the spatial affordance have three three opportunities to, um, uh, to, to be more complete and to be focused on, on the field of mobile augmented reality games. And in this sense, it's important to take into account the possibilities for this media to scan and understand physical spaces and their features. Also to synchronize these spaces with virtual objects 
and finally to track the relationship that the user maintains with the hybrid space composed of a physical and digital elements. In here, uh, we had uh, a proposal in order to analyze up to what extent physical elements or physical spaces can be integrated into the gameplay experience because uh, the thing we were interested the most was um, to see how uh, game designers can, uh, can implement or can integrate physical elements into these hybrid experiences. In this sense, uh, one of the axes of this model has to do with uh, the representational layer and goes from digital to hybrid game world spaces. And the other axis has to do with interaction with game rules and mechanics, uh, also from digital to hybrid gameplay spaces. So. The main combinations we have seen uh, from our analysis are in the first part, digital game world space and digital gameplay space. Uh, this has been very common in games that uh, try to resemble board game experiences. Uh, in this kind of games, the physical space is merely an anchoring surface for 3D objects. Thus, uh, physical space does not work as a representational, sensory, narrative, or gameplay element, but only as a technical resource. No? It is just like a surface. Uh, one example, as you, as you can see in this picture, um, is, is present in the game Ticket to Earth. Then we can see uh, the combination of hybrid game hybrid game world survey spaces and digital gameplay spaces. In this sense, uh, for these games are these ones in which the physical space becomes part of the game world, or at least the representational layer of the game. In this sense, uh, in Amon, which is the, the game you see in this picture, um, it's a game about solving puzzles and simulates like a hole emerging from, from the actual floor and releasing a statue that needs to be fixed uh, through, through, a, through a puzzle. No? And the player uh, needs to visualize and to perform different movement gestures through the six degrees, degrees of freedom property. So in this sense, uh, the real or the, uh, the the analog environment takes place into the or is participating in the representational layer of the game, but uh, it's not integrated into the gameplay experience. And finally, we saw the combination of hybrid game world space and hybrid gameplay space. Uh, in this case, physical space operates centrally to represent part of the game world, and it's also integrated as a game mechanic. An example is Mario Kart, Leap Home Circuit, uh, in which the way you place the physical cardboard goals you see in the pictures uh, on the space, uh, shape the actual structure of the game level in the digital part. No? So it's interesting. Also, car crashes with physical elements are also represented in the digital representation of the game. So we really think that uh, mobile augmented reality games, in order to provide uh, hybrid experiences, should take more advantage of the possibilities of the physical space and physical elements. Um, as, as per the conclusions of our work, we can say that the, the results were not very satisfactory because most of the games really belonged to the first classification. Uh, everything happened on the digital part of the game, right? And uh, we don't think this is the, the, the perfect hybrid experience for sure. So we think uh, it's necessary to better integrate uh, the physical and um, the digital into, into this kind of games. 
Uh, in any case, we have been able to see some interesting trends like the one uh, I, I showed about uh, Mario Kart, the home circuit, and uh, we hope these results and especially this uh, framework kind of uh, can help designers and developers to, to, to really uh, create specific gameplay experiences for mobile augmented reality games. So thanks for your attention. And uh, we, I, I, will, I will listen to the different questions. I'm quite surprised that you didn't mention Pokemon Go. That is, uh, I mean, uh, it's uh, a very popular, it has been a very popular game, and uh, it's uh, quite a long time that it's around. And uh, that is also very interesting because uh, there's also the social dimension, okay? And uh, so, uh, I, I just wondering why. So that is the first question. Uh, the second question is, uh, um, do you, I mean, what you think that could be the advantage of using uh, these games uh, for uh, education? Mm -hmm. uh, and the third one, if you will also to answer to this one, I wonder also why, I mean, did you uh, uh, engage in uh, in an uh, in investigation also the user of the uh, of the game? That's why I also mentioned Pokemon Go because uh, uh, it will be uh, uh, quite easy to find uh, uh, several users of that game because from from them probably you will know which could be the truly, uh, 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 I mean, those that are considered truly affordable from the user point of view, instead that from the design or the researcher. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in the first place, um, regarding Pokemon Go, uh, we, we actually did analyze it. Um, and some interesting thing we saw uh, on the game and regarding this, this kind of uh, taking into account physical elements had to do with, with the moment you really had to, to, to hunt the Pokemon. Uh, in this sense, it's interesting uh, the fact that uh, you need not to get very close to the Pokemon when it appears, because if you do, it represents that the Pokemon gets frightened and runs, so you cannot hunt it. So it's a nice way uh, to take into account how the player is performing, you know, and how the player is interacting in the physical environment and how the digital layer of the game reacts, you know, because uh, you are really making or you are really um, provoking the, the Pokemon to go away. Also, as per the um, possible educational uses of, of a hybrid mobile augmented reality experiences, um, in this specific case, uh, we did not pay attention to, to, to many educational games. The, the content uh, was mainly um, dealing with commercial games. Uh, but uh, it could be interesting to, to, to try to introduce these properties into, into a hybrid experience uh, in the context of some, some educational setting. But so far, we, we didn't do. We think it could be really, really interesting, but uh, so far it has not been or, or a scope. And as per the user, uh, the user's perception, we really uh, think it is uh, a necessary step to complete the, the study. No? So far, we did a participant observation, uh, but we think the results could get richer if we perform these tests with more users, with questionnaires, and observing also their reactions. Uh, to get more more solid um, uh, outputs about or 
for research. So yeah, uh, everything that has to do with interaction design gets richer if you have the chance, if you have the chance to test with, with a sample of users.